Let's keep talking women's basketball, though, and uh, talk about a team that has uh, flipped the, uh, the the situation, as it were, in the MAC Freedom. Um, you know, this has been FDU Florham over the last few years in charge, and this year it's been DeSales. A little bit of a slow start. They started the season 4-4, four and four, but since then have only lost two games. They are 16-2 and two since the first eight of the game or of the season. They will host FDU Florham in the title game on Saturday at 1 o'clock with a chance to go to the NCAA tournament. So we figured at high time we talked to the Bulldogs. So joining us on the Hoopsville Hotline is their head coach, Fred Richter. Coach, welcome to Hoopsville, sir. It's always a pleasure. Thank you for well, having me. I appreciate it. Well, I appreciate it as well. Of course, you know, that that – that four and four start was right before we got the chance to see you in uh, in Salem or in uh, in Salem. Let me try that one again in Las Vegas, uh, where we got a chance to see you play Millsaps and Laverne and come out with two big wins, fifty eight forty three and sixty nine fifty. That's that kind of was the start of this recent campaign with only two losses since that point. What's the difference in the two halves of the season for you guys? Uh, some of it had to do with uh, the fact that we started uh, three freshmen at the uh, guard position, and uh, they certainly have matured. One, unfortunately, is hurt now for the rest of the season, but the other two are, are doing quite well. And the uh, second part would be the fact that our schedule was uh, beyond tough uh, to start the season. We uh, played Scranton in our uh, tip off, our own tip-off uh, final, had them at 24 all in the second and at halftime, and then they – they took good care of the ball in the second half and good care of uh, us defensively in the game. But uh, we, we've also played Stevens, Muhlenberg, Moravian. We we had quite a schedule, and uh, I really think that helped toughen us up for the rest of the season as well. Yeah, you certainly did have a tough schedule. You pointed them all out there, Scranton and Moravian and Manhattanville, Muhlenberg. Um, of course, uh, you got into, well, like I said, you played Millsaps uh, and beat them out there in, in Vegas at the D3Hoops.com Classic and beat them by 15 um, I, I, I'll freely admit when I watched you guys in Vegas, I wasn't overwhelmed. It wasn't like there were players who were just blowing you out of the, out of the arena going, wow, you know, it was just a whole team effort. There was lots of different pieces and lots of different plays that kind of kept you guys in it or kept you guys well in advance. You're well in front, very much a team effort. It seemed. Absolutely. We're, we're very deep. We, uh, we average, uh, 10 or 11 kids in double digit minutes a game. Uh, our leading scorer, uh, Morgan McCullion, is a six foot uh, force inside, uh, but we have a lot of pieces around her that, that really do well. Uh, and some of them are three point shooters, some of them drive it to the rim, some of them play uh, better defense than others. But hmm. all together, we, we put, to bet, put together a pretty good product. We really do. Yeah, so, you know, since we've seen you, and obviously since the holiday break, basically, because between the Muhlenberg loss on the 12th of December, then you then you had the first game at the D3 Hoops Classic on the 28th. So that was your break. Since then, as we said, two losses. One was Delaware Valley and one was the FDU Florham. You've split on the season with FDU Florham, um, both winning on the uh, opponent's court, interestingly enough. Um, and obviously you now will face them a third time for the championship game. You lost to them just the other day by 18, or uh, back on the, the last weekend. Uh, previously to that, you beat them by 13. They're also a different team <laughs> since the two times you've seen them. They've been going through a little bit of an interesting season themselves. What do you expect from Saturday's game? What after you Florham team do you expect to see on the floor? Well, they're, they're very talented at, at uh, three positions for sure, and it's not like they're mince meat at the other positions. But uh, oh. uh, Shalette Brown is, is, is a heck of a player at our level and very, very uh Difficult to, to deal with uh, in, in our situation in that we're not that uh, big and strong at the four spot, uh, but we will uh, we will challenge as, as we did at their place. We probably played our best game of the year in uh, early uh, it was early January there and actually won by 23 and and was never in question. We just took off and went. And the game most recently at our place, they pretty much did the same thing to us. They uh, got started and, and took off and went with it as well. So in many ways, both teams have changed a lot since, uh, since the games. And uh, it, it'll be a very interesting game. Uh, we, we mirror each other very closely statistically, averaging a little over 70 points a game and giving up 58 points a game. We have exactly the same record uh, overall. Um, uh, just like I said, uh, it should be a very, very interesting game. How important is it that this one's at Bolero Hall? How imp yeah, You guys are getting them out of their place where they have dominated the last few years, obviously on their way to a national championship along the way at one point. How important, though, is it that you're going to make them have to play in your gym? And, and it is 
one of those quintessential Division Three small little gyms. How important is it that it, that it's at your place? Well, I'm not sure. Uh, <laughs> you know, we we uh, we're the only team to beat them at their gym this year, right? And uh, we uh, and we lost them at our gym. Uh, we didn't shoot well in our own in our own facility, which was uh, disappointing, obviously. Uh, and they did shoot pretty well. So, uh, uh, you know, the home court advantage is nice. We don't travel; they do. We uh, we played at home as they did on Wednesday. We both have a pretty good run going. Uh, like I said, it, I, I, I'm not sure it's going to make a big difference. Uh, both teams are probably more pumped and, and more prepared than they are worried about uh, the location of the uh, of the game. By the way, you barely got into this game. Let's point out the fact you needed a buzzer beater, something I meant to show before this segment started, to get into the game. And talk about great passing. Well done. Nice little pass around the outside to get it inside. We'll show it to everybody at the end of this uh, segment. But, you know, skinny your teeth, as you could say, Coach, uh, to get into this one. But how much is that something that can also fire up your team and and make them even more motivated? Well, we're certainly excited by the the last play of the game. Uh, We actually dominated the first half. um, And then the second half, uh, they came out and played awfully well. And uh, we missed some laughs. We had some turnovers, missed some foul shots, and they took advantage of every situation so that we were really in a bad place at the end of the game. And uh, our young ladies uh, um, executed a play that we actually drew up on, on the uh, on the board, which we don't do that often. We try to prepare. But uh, we didn't have a timeout for the last play because uh, – it went out of bounds after the play failed the first time. We actually ran exactly the same play with a, obviously a much better result. First one resulted in, in Morgan McCullion missing a, a, a layup. The second one, she uh, made a little five-footer under duress from a great pass from Jen Napolitano and even maybe even better pass on the inbounds from Caitlin Kelly. So, uh, you know, there, there were a lot of good things to it, uh, a lot of confidence. Uh, we, we've been all over the web uh, with pictures from different angles of the winning basket and, and our girls going crazy. And the, the excitement is, is heavy on campus. And uh, it, it's, it's neat to be on a college campus when this kind of excitement happens. No, I'm quite sure it is. Uh, uh, interesting enough, your season's kind of bookend here at the end. Uh, after you, Florham was back on the 13th. Then you played Manhattanville, then Eastern, then Manhattanville. And now after you floor them, uh, you're seeing these opponents uh, back to back, which is a little bit sometimes of a quirk of the schedule. Um, does that kind of wear on the team, though, at the same time? Jeez, we're seeing these guys again. We've done this the last few years. Um, two years ago, we beat Eastern in a semifinal at Eastern uh, to get to the championship game, of which we lost to them twice before. And we played them the last game of the radio season. Uh, so it, it's... Uh, Something that in a small eight-team league tends to happen, um, and uh, it's just the way it is. Our girls uh, have handled it pretty well. Uh, they like being a little more familiar with the teams, uh, being in so many things that they're involved in. Sometimes they forget uh, uh, a t- what a team does or, or what kind of game it was if it's uh, six weeks apart. So uh, it's um, I-, I think in many ways benefits all of us. And let's talk about quickly before we let you go the the turnaround. You guys were twelve, uh, what twelve and twelve last year, twelve and uh, 14, fourteen and 12. twelve. Yeah, fourteen yeah. and twelve last year after a twenty and seven season the the year before that. Now you're back in the mix at twenty and six, and this is a relatively young team. You only have two seniors on the squad. Just one of those two seniors is is one of your top five scorers on the squad. Uh, this is this is a tremendous turnaround in a quick period of time with a young team. A lot of it has to do with our guard play. Um, we, we, we have two freshmen that are playing uh, the guard spots for us. That uh, I like to call them combination guards because they can both bring it up. They can both score it. They can both drive it. They both defend. Uh, it doesn't matter which one has the ball to initiate offense or the fast break. And uh, uh, we, we handle pretty well with them in charge. Uh, Morgan McCauley continues to come along. Uh, as a, a, a just a tremendous inside force and, a, and somebody that people will certainly be looking at as an All-American in the next year or two. And then we also have uh, Jen Napolitano, who has just made second team all conference, yep. started her first game in the seventh or eighth game of, the, of her senior year, has just come on phenomenally. Her best big game so far this year was the first time we beat FDU. She lit them up for 22 or 23, a number of threes, and just, just really played awfully well. So it, it's, been a, it's been a nice mix. It's uh, quite a change in style. Uh, we're able to play much better defense, uh, especially man to man. We we just uh, we've been a little more exciting and uh, a little more fast breaking. We're average uh, nine, I believe nine points more a game this year than last year. So uh, uh, we're a little more up tempo. Uh, we're actually much more uh, fun to watch as well. 
You're setting fourth in the regional rankings. FDU Florham sitting fifth in the regional rankings. What does your gut tell you about an at-large opportunity if that is what's needed to get into the NCAA tournament? I think we're both in bad shape if we don't win on Saturday, to be perfectly frank. The top three teams in the region are all from the New Jersey Athletic Conference, and uh, uh, they're, they're the ones that are going to get a, uh, a second bid out of all of this, I would imagine. So it sort of puts us on the back burner. You throw a couple upsets into some other regions, and, and it puts us further back. I, I think both of us, Mark and I, both look at this game as a must-win if we want to go to the tournament. Uh, I was going to say, on top of that, um, how do you explain? Do, do you have to explain that to the team? Uh, no, we we don't go there. Uh, we we talk about what it takes to win a forty minute game on Saturday. I figured as much, but I thought I'd ask anyway. Uh, Coach, appreciate you taking the time to join us here. Talk about your Bulldogs. Certainly an impressive season, and like I said, in a really impressive second two-thirds of the campaign uh, to get to where you guys are. Really glad to hear uh, that you'll be uh, – or not glad to hear. I'm just thrilled to see a championship game. Going to be uh, at the sales yet again and looking forward to seeing how it all plays out. As always, though, we give the coach the final word. Any final thoughts you'd like to share with those who may be tuning in? Sure. Uh, I have a couple grandsons that uh, are the uh, SID sons, and my uh, two of my uh, grandsons I really enjoy, and, and Parker uh, as, as the oldest of the two, and uh, his younger brother, Beckett, have been to all the games. In fact, uh, Parker was the first one on the floor and on the winning basket on Wednesday night. It, it, it's, it's a lot of fun to have them, the three uh, Searfoss boys along, and, and the two Richter kids when they come in from New Jersey. It's a uh, Having seven of my grandkids there for uh, some of the home games is a, is a highlight for this young guy. Well, good, Coach. Uh, congratulations. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Good luck the rest of the way, and uh, hopefully we're talking about the Bulldogs on Monday. Sounds good. Awesome. Sounds T- good. Take care, Coach. Fred Richter, thank join, you. Absolutely. Fred Richter joining us from DeSales again. Mac, regular se- Mac Freedom regular season title. Uh, they are trying to win their first conference title, FDU Florham, in a while. FDU Florham obviously has been the big juggernaut. Those two teams face off Saturday. Big game, to say the least.